Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher. And in today's lesson, we're looking at motion in two dimensions, in particular, projectile motion. In this example, we're going to see what it means when an, whenever an object releases an object while moving. In this case, we're going to consider a bird that is moving and is releasing his dropping. Again, dropping is another word for poop, but I'm not going to keep saying it in this video. So here the bird is moving, and then it's going to be wanting to drop its dropping and hit the waiter on the head. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves, and let's read the question first. A bird traveling at 20 meters per second wants to hit a waiter 10 meters below with its dropping. In order to hit the waiter, the bird must release his dropping some distance before he's directly overhead. What is this distance? So we're going to use our method of problem solving that we talked about before. And the first thing we want to do is to visualize the problem. But they're really giving us a diagram, so there's not much to visualize in this point, right? Just the bird flying horizontally, releasing his dropping, and then hoping that it lands on the waiter's unsuspecting head. The second step is we want to draw a coordinate system. A good choice is usually wherever the object is first launched from. Again, you can choose your coordinate system and place it anywhere you like, but for convenience, we want to put it right whenever the object gets released at, the, at its initial moment. So we have our x and our y dimensions. So that's our second step. We want to set up the coordinate system. The third step, we want to draw our displacement vector. Recall that displacement looks at the change in position. So initially from where the bird is to hopefully on top of the waiter's head. And we draw our displacement vector. Delta D. But in this case, now we're looking at motion in two dimensions. So we can take each vector and we can resolve it along its components. What that means is we can break this displacement vector and we can draw it along the horizontal part and its vertical part. And in order to do that, the horizontal part of displacement will be directly to the right. Delta D X. And because it is pointing to the right, we're going to take it as a positive number. Delta D. However, if you recall this question is asking us how far away the dropping must be released. So this is actually our unknown question mark. The vertical displacement is just directly downwards. Delta dy. And again, because it is pointing downwards, we take that convention to be negative. That means we have negative 10 meters for our vertical displacement. Once we've taken care of displacement, the next vector we look at is velocity. Now, velocity is a bit tricky because in here, the bird is moving and the bird releases its dropping. But the very moment that it released the dropping, we can assume, due to inertia, which we're going to learn in the second unit, that objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So the dropping is part of the bird while it is released. It was already moving with the same velocity as the bird, so that's why it's going to have the same initial velocity vector from the moment which it was released of the bird. So our initial velocity of the dropping is directly to the right, v initial. And because it's to the right, we can take it as positive, so it's positive 20 meters per second. Normally, you will look at the components, just like we did for displacement. But because this is only pointing to the right, our initial velocity is actually equal to the horizontal initial velocity. So in other words, v initial x. Our next step, we're going to look at the acceleration vector. Now this one, you need to assume, because we are on the planet Earth, that it is provided by gravity. So our acceleration is due to gravity, which is pointing down, thus taking that convention of negative g, which we can approximate as 9.8 meters per second square. And the negative just comes because of the direction it is pointing downwards. And this whole motion occur 
during some time interval of delta t. This we don't actually know, so we leave it as a question mark. So you see, whenever we were solving problems, the first step is visualize, then coordinate system, displacement, velocity, acceleration vector, then you consider the time intervals. Once you finish that part, then you're going to write the main three kinematic equations of motion. And once we have written the three kinematic equations of motion, our next step, this is where I'm going to show you my way of solving the problem. I always start off with the main equation, which I like to call the fortune telling one. So in other words, we can predict the future of things. Uh, you must watch another video I did in the past where I talk about this in detail. So our fortune telling equation, equation number one. Let's rewrite this one and then we're going to consider the horizontal component separately from the vertical component. As, as you can see, we start from the main equation and because it's a vector equation, we can rewrite it along the x component and then along its y component. So all I did is I added the index x or y to indicate the difference between the horizontal motion and the vertical motion. But at this point, you already forgot the question, most likely. So let's go back and quickly look at this question and see what they were even asking us to find. We were... So in this question, we have a bird traveling at 20 meters per second, wants to hit a waiter 10 meters below with his dropping. In order to hit the waiter, the bird must release his dropping some distance before he's directly overhead. What is this distance? The horizontal distance that we're looking for is the delta dx. But we don't know this one, right? That's what we're looking for. Now, normally, when you think of a projectile, we have the horizontal component and the vertical component, and they're separate from one another. But there's only one thing that connects those two, that it's going to be occurring during the same time interval, so the delta t. So usually a good strategy is to first find the time that it takes in one component to use in the other component. In this case, we can find the time that it takes to drop 10 meters. And once we find the time that it takes to drop 10 meters, we can find the distance that is required to be in that time covering at 20 meters per second. So we're going to connect the y component to the x component. So we're going to consider one component at a time. So let's look at our x components first. Our delta dx, since it was pointing to the right, we said it's going to be positive delta dx. Our horizontal speed is directly to the right, so it was actually the whole initial speed, which was v initial. And our acceleration was pointing down, so there is no horizontal component. There's no piece of it that goes to the left or to the right. So horizontally, the acceleration is zero. And for the initial velocity, we can even do better because we know it's positive 20 meters per second. Let us replace those values and write down our new equation. So our horizontal displacement equals to 20 meters per second times the change in time. Welcome equation number one. We are going to repeat this process, but now we're going to look at the vertical component. The vertical displacement, we said is going to be negative 10 because it was pointing down. When the bird released the dropping, it was only moving horizontally. So initially, the dropping has no initial velocity along the y component, so it's zero. And our acceleration vector was due to gravity, which points down, so negative g. Let's simplify this equation. So negative 10 equals to negative 1 over 2 g delta t squared. Before labeling as equation number 2, let's simplify this a bit further. Notice that there's a negative on both sides of the equation. This means we can cancel it out. So 10 equals 2, 1 over 2 g delta t squared. And our goal is to isolate for the change in time. So the first thing we can do, we can multiply both sides by 2. This will get rid of the 1 over 2 term. 2 times 10 equals to 2 times 1 over 2 g delta t squared. So 20 equals to g delta t squared. 
To get rid of the G, we can divide both sides by G, which is 20 over G equals to delta T squared. We can simplify this by taking the square root on both sides. So delta T is the square root of 20 over G. Let's plug this into our calculator. We get the, the change in time is approximately 1.43 seconds. So I didn't need to create an equation too because all I did is I simplified the y component so it actually turned out to just give me the value that I was looking for which was the time interval that it takes to drop 10 meters. And recall what we said before. The horizontal motion is independent from the vertical motion but what connects the two is that both equations depend on the time interval. So once we found the time from the y component we can actually substitute in the value into our x component to solve for the horizontal distance. So our horizontal distance is going to be 20 meters per second times 1.43 seconds, which plugging it into our calculator, we get approximately 28.6 meters. Let's write our concluding statement now. So the bird needs to release his dropping 28.6 meters away, horizontally away from the weight arm. This seems reasonable, and let's go back and highlight our steps so that way you can mimic this in the future and problem solve other projectile questions. So our first step was to visualize it. Second step, coordinate system. Third, think about your displacement vectors, horizontally and vertically. Fourth, your velocity vectors, horizontally and vertically. Acceleration, horizontally and vertically. Your time intervals, write down the three main equations of motion. Always start off with the main one, which is the fortune telling one, and resolve it along its x component and y component. Most of the time you have to get two equations, but here we were able to simplify to just give us the time interval, which we use to sub into the equation for the horizontal component because the motion is connected during the same time interval. And then we wrote our concluding statement in this case. Great, uh, so if you like this video, please hit like, and then I'll see you in the next one where we solve more challenging questions.